Hello, and welcome to the Overly Animated Podcast, where we take animation seriously. We talk everything animation here, including DuckTales, which we'll be getting into right now. I'm your host, Alex Bonilla, and today I'm joined by Michelle Andrew. Hello. And Steve Zeck. Hi. Uh, today, we are going to be discussing the latest three episodes of DuckTales. We realize we took an extra week off to this time, so we've got a little bit of catching up to do. But uh, we, we've got day of... We've got Day of the Only Child uh, from the Confidential Case Files of Agent 22 and Who is Gizmo Duck. So those are the three episodes we're going to be talking about today. If you want to catch our previous discussions on DuckTales, you can find that at OverlyAnimated.com. You can also subscribe to us uh, on iTunes at OverlyAnimated.com slash iTunes or on YouTube at OverlyAnimated.com slash YouTube. Oh, well, but yeah, yeah well, this time we've got uh, three episodes to talk about, uh, Steve. My uh, fault. I blame myself. I thought I was blame myself for delay. We're doing this one week later because I couldn't make the last last week because I was locked in a pantry. So sorry. Just like uh, Donald, uh, early <laughs> enough. Ah, ah. Uh, uh, then I won't get into your financial troubles because I know how hard it is for you to get a loan these days. <laughs> the, the, Housing climate is very difficult for you. Yeah. But uh, yeah, that was the entirety of Donald's appearance in three episodes. So there we don't need to talk about him anymore. Bye, bye Donald. Do you, do you think they know how hard he is to understand and they're purposely <laughs> limiting his you, screen time still? to reflect he's that? In, he's in two episodes. He was in the. Uh, but he's barely he in the, it. And, and by the way, the Beagle Boys are freaking lucky. He was tied up to, by the pen because he was Lucy would have kicked their butts again because he's done it before. Oh, definitely. <laughs> he's full of surprises. <laughs> Yeah, Donald will show up like in the series finale to save the day or something just randomly. <laughs> but uh, we have three episodes here that do not involve Donald uh, a lot, but Ooh. other characters that, <laughs> that we need to <laughs> check in. Um, Michelle, uh, of these uh, th- uh, three episodes of uh, Only Child Day, of Agent 22, who is Gizmo Duck, uh, which of the three stood out to you or, or a character that stood out to you of this batch? I was surprised how much I enjoy I enjoyed Day of the Only Child, but like once Agent Twenty Two happened, I was like, okay, wow, a Webby Scrooge like team up. My prayers that I didn't have were answered anyway. It is everything in the world is so good. That's definitely my my top one, and we'll probably get into Gizmo Duck. I. There were certain things about it that really weren't working for me, but I think it has to do with just, like, the general tone of the episode. It's very, like, Saturday morning cartoony, and I think those definitely aren't my fave, but they're good in their own way. But that's definitely, like, the lowest for me out of the three at this point. You didn't like the Mark Beaks' Beaks, uh, Sailor Moon transformation? I know, I liked that, like... (laughs) you know, isolated thing. <laughs> but I wasn't high on certain other things as much as other people maybe are. All right. Um, so Steve, do you have a preference out of these three episodes? Oh, it's pretty it's easy. It is the uh, Secret Files of 1822. Yeah! So, um, yeah, the same thing with Michelle. I love Scrooge and Webby's bonding. And, and in the old series, Webby called Scrooge Uncle Scrooge all the time. But here, it feels like she's earned that right. She kind of yeah. earned it. So. And and also, you probably I don't know some of the references we had in this episode to a, another show called Gummy Bears. Um, we had a, a whole bunch of the show. Yeah, yeah. It's a uh, it had nice. I have not. Easter egg. <laughs> it's from the it's from the eighties, also, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. When we're done, I gotta. Let me put up the intro on Discord for you, Alex. <laughs> All right. But... <laughs> it's a great uh... theme song. Um, but yeah, I, I love that one. Um, the Only Child is also pretty interesting. The parts of it I did find kind of disturbing. I don't know what was more disturbing. Um, Dewey and what he was doing or this new character, uh, Doofus. Doofus is so creepy. I kind of love him. He's like the onion <laughs> of the show. He's- so scary. The, the, wait, ha- hold up. Do not slander Onion. Like yeah, that. Onion didn't make his parents become servants to yeah. do his every bidding. Uh, it's not, well, you know, yeah, he's more like uh, Little Gideon in a way, in terms of oh, yeah. Little Gideon yeah. kind of made his mom a servant. Here, he kind of does it to, to both his parents, though. <laughs> and uh, as for who is Gizmo Duck, like I said, it's all right episode. Um, I'm not as big as a fan of Gizm- of the old Gizmo Duck as maybe other people are. Um, yeah, I personally, I, of the old show, I liked season one the best because it's more true to 
the Car Barks comics. I'm more into that. Like I said, I'm more interested in characters like Daisy or other characters from the Car Barks series appearing than, you know, than say a Dark Green Duck, who I love, or a certain other character that's going to appear in the next couple of episodes. Oh. <laughs> from another yeah. show. <laughs> Okay. But yeah, uh, some people, people in the fandom are psyched about that, and I'm like, okay, that's cool. But like I said, if we get an announcement confirmation that, you know, like someone like Daisy Duck or April, May, and June are going to be in the show, I would explode in excitement. Steve wants keep, keep. Daisy so bad, you guys. He is yeah, gunning yeah. so hard. She <laughs> is the LED of this show for me, like... How is she? Uh, how? Is uh, for, uh, uh, Isn't Daisy just like a nice duck? I mean, no, isn't that LD, in, terms of, in terms of my excitement of wanting to see her on the show, oh, like LD okay, yes, yeah, because a, 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 you're mentioning okay. a character from another t- show entirely in LD, and two, <laughs> how can she be a, the LD of this show if she hasn't even appeared in this show? Yeah, Stop. we don't know what she's Stop. gonna be like. <laughs> but I'm, but I'm just but, about... leave, leave her over in Three Caballeros Land or wherever she is right now. Oh come on! But uh, um, <laughs> any, anyways, oh. it's focusing on the episode we have in front of us uh, <laughs> uh i i agree agent 22 is awesome because uh, i think uh, webby and scrooge are the two most developed characters of this show can we can we yeah. agree on that absolutely so so like yeah. putting those two together fi- finally giving them some time together alone without the nephews like that's uh, that's awesome oh. to finally have them it, it like be- um, bond you with each other and then you add in then you add in um, Mrs. Beakley being awesome in, in her youth and, and even to in the present. So like it's just like an added bonus. And I love the tone of the of the episode, like very sp- like secret spyish, <laughs> okay. but like never going over the top with it. But I just love the feel of the episode. It was pretty nice, pretty nice. Uh, and uh, yeah, and the the action scenes were okay too. But also just seeing Webby like be competent at things uh, that's always great to see and like like giving her time to shine. So I, I think Agent Twenty Two stands out here far and above yeah. as the best episode of of this batch here. Can I give a hot take though? I think Webby is secretly she is the real main character of the show. She's. Uh, uh, I- I don't know. I, I, mean, I, I, that I or... will say yeah. one thing that kind of concerned me about Webby that I had not really thought of like this before this episode was that she she's devoted kind of her whole life to learning about Scrooge and his family. But like, what about her <laughs> and her interests outside of these people that she spent her whole life training and, and just like learning about? I mean, shouldn't she have some like more selfhood than she does right now? Is it is that too much to expect for a character I'm, that we I'm love? Not even, I'm not sure. And if what we really relate to Mrs. Beakley, that could be a mystery there. There could be a <laughs> yeah, some, I want to know behind that. I want to know about her parents too. Family, yeah. I like. I want to. I want to learn about that at this point because she served so well as as a way to help them figure out their own stuff. But like, I'm sure she has her own stuff too. And for it to be kind of like, you know, a symbiotic relationship, I hope that if she wants to learn about her family or something to do with herself that does not involve Scrooge and his family, that they will be there to help her too. Mm -hmm. Because at this point it is kind of one sided in that way. And it, I just, I never really considered it until she was like, I've spent my whole life learning about you. Look at this book I have on you. And I was like, Oh my God, Webby, (laughs) this really is all you've been doing. Like most of your life. Oh my God, there must be more going on with you. She probably needs to see some therapy. She, well, like I I think in the, in the opening of this show, that's how they introduced her, yeah. right? Like, yeah. she was stuck a- alone in this mansion. It's not until the nephews show up that she's beginning to branch out. Yeah. And I think we've had other episodes focusing on that. But, like, this episode kind of brings back to, like, like yeah, this is what Webby was doing all this time before the nephew showed up. Yeah. Like, th- th- this is her entire life I until guess- the nephews threw her world upside down, I guess. Maybe Lena's also a good thing she can have that's kind of outside. I mean, yeah. I mean that might come back into play with Scrooge and everything, but well, for now, I'm yeah. glad she has one friend who's not oh, in the Scrooge yeah. family. And I think, though, it also, though, I, this episode, any this episode, having her be more close to Scrooge does give her more stake of going to protect this family when we get to, like, deal with Magicka in the future, when she's going to go after this family, Webby's going to be very determined to protect it, so... 
Yeah, and uh, speaking of like the the one sidedness of the relationship before that, that's what makes that scene where they're like talking and the Scrooge is like, "You know so much about me, but I don't uh, think I know that much about you." Like that that, that makes that scene work a little, right? Because yeah. it, it's kind of sad, but like also Scrooge is actually making an effort to try get, getting some stuff out of Webby. So like pe- people don't ask her things; it's just Webby talking and talking. Well, I, well, I like those. So, like it, it's it's a nice uh, counterbalance and something that does wonders for developing their relationship what, in the what, show. What I really oh, like absolutely, those... I would agree. Because like really he, like... it, it's not that he doesn't care; he just he had no idea to even think about Webby yeah. that way, or like honestly, maybe even his nephews. To be real, like Scrooge yeah. is very kind of into his own thing. But he, you're right, Alex. He does try to take actual yeah. like, oh, like your favorite drink is the nutmeg tea. Actually, I kind of hate it. Oh, and he's like, geez, <laughs> I'll remember that for next time. He is making actual efforts. That's true. Uh, well, what I do like though, well, how they they go between the flashback and the present time, and what they show is how much influence. Both Mrs. Beakley and Scrooge has had yes, on Webby. Exactly, That's she's true. like both of them. I noticed that too. In a way, she's their daughter in a weird little way. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. Well, Webby gets influences from both of them. Yeah. So I guess in that way it works. But yeah, I, I did love. Uh, sometimes I get annoyed by episodes that do this, where they go back and forth between different timelines. But I actually really like the way they did it here because they juxtaposed it so well with how Beakley acted in the past versus how Scrooge is acting now and stuff uh, like that. And uh, it, I think they, they executed that device really and well. And they subvert it in that the uh, flashback storyline was resolved second opposed to the present day story, you know, conflict. Uh, I guess. Well, although if they showed the past one first, it might have been a spoiler. But like, what's yeah, no, happen? I'm talking about, like, you know, defeating the villain, like... They defeat the villain in the present first. We see how they defeat her first in the oh, present I, I see. before we see how it ended in the flashback. Yeah, yeah, it's a it's a, it's a good twist there. Um, how, how do we feel about the villain in this episode? Uh, Black Heron. Um, Black very, Canary. Very... No, I Black Heron. Yes, I Black I just Heron. said her name. <laughs> <laughs> Black Heron. Not but, uh, names. How, how do how, how do we feel? It, it's it's a bird. It's a bird. It's not even a name. It's a bird. Um, um, uh, how do we feel about, about the... She doesn't get a real name. <laughs> I mean... Well, like, black, in Marvel, you have Black Widow. Like, they never actually get... Like, that's her hero no, name. that's so, true. I mean, maybe, maybe, like, that's probably not her real, real name anyway. That's her evil spy name. Yeah. A- Agent 22 isn't Speakley's real name either. So. Exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah, a- a- any other thoughts on Black Heron or <laughs> move on? I mean, she's clearly yeah. gonna come back. She's like a lot of the villains we see in the show. We're probably gonna see her again, but we have no idea when. Yeah. And yeah. She, she, in a way, though, how over the top she is with her villainy, she reminds me of Glomgold. Well, I think she's a bit more yeah, competent. Yeah, she's confident. I'm talking about how she's extra. She's just evil. She's yeah. not, like, extra, though. No, I'm talking about, like, how she put on this film to, to gloat and threaten was, the world. Okay, that was kind of extra. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I guess all the villains. Are like uh, she that. seems to get very. Dist- she seems to get very distracted when people talk over her oh, monologues. Yeah, monologues are very <laughs> important to her. <laughs> that that's always the sign of a classic supervillain yeah. that they uh, put emphasis on their monologues. Mm-hmm. Uh, and oh. th- yeah, we have uh, Mrs. Beakley in the past. So that, that's kind oh. of a cool. For a long time, we've been speculating like she's a spy, okay. and like uh, it, it finally comes confirmed. to fruition here. I called in the first podcast. Uh, I predicted that. Well, now. Yeah, good, good job, Steve. <laughs> yeah, good job, Steve. One thing I'm wondering now, so that's how she met Scrooge. They're both very, well, I mean, they both get the job done. Miss Beakley might be more competent as a spy than young Scrooge. Yeah. But they're more or less on the same level. And I'm wondering now, how did she go from being his partner to being his, like, maid lady? Like, how did that happen? Isn't that weird? <laughs> like, to, to go from being a partner with somebody to, like, cleaning their house and looking after everything? Sure what kind of... She's... How did they get to that point? I, I want to know. I think her real job is to be Scrooge's, like, bodyguard, and this is chilled up a cover. Okay. I think... Like... Maybe that was how it was justified at yeah. first. Like, <laughs> hey, you're going to be a spy, but j- just the just in case somebody notices. Dirty. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, also do some cleaning just to make sure people don't notice you. <laughs> or so. Yeah, and Duckworth but, uh, often uh, criticizes her for not doing a good job, so. 
<laughs> yeah, so it's, it's not her fir- her first instinct because she she's better at fighting. Uh, uh, I will say that the the opening fight sequence of them in the kitchen was- is really interesting because they they like turn off the music entirely, so it's just mm-hmm. the noise of the kitchenware being oh, used against each other. I, I wonder. Besides uh, Webby and Scrooge, do the others know she's a spy? I mean, does Louis know? Because or he just so dense he doesn't care. I think they probably well, would not be surprised if they found out, but they might not know for sure. Um, yeah, because like the nephews in in comparison to Webby just showed up, yeah, and also Webby uh, is the one who's done all this research. The nephews don't really care. So. That's true. <laughs> like, yeah. uh, I I I would be surprised if they knew. But oh. uh, yeah, we we also get the reveal of Mrs. Beakley's full name, a Bentina. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think uh, Scrooge uses it when you know, when uh, Mrs. Beakley reveals the formula, and then at the end of the flashback sequence, she, she also says, "Like call me B- Bentina Beakley." And I'm not even sure that's her so, real name. That could always be a cover. <laughs> oh wow! <laughs> I think I think it's a real name. Okay. Like she had reached that point with Scrooge to tell him yeah. the truth. Uh, um, yeah. but, and and then there's the there's the parallel in the present of like call me Uncle yeah, Scrooge and then Webby's I'm like Webby. I'm Webby. Yeah. Like, Let's get a fresh new start. Like, yeah, that, that was a very cute ending to the um, episode. Even though they like kind of ruined with like focusing in on the formula. Like, yeah, what, ooh, what's gonna? gonna be who cares about the formula? I think that's <laughs> yeah. definitely that's moment. That's, that's gonna be used. Sure. I'm predict. I'm pretty sure she's gonna use it to defeat Magica. I predict probably in the finale. She's gonna have the the Maybe dime, and then Robbie's gonna use her juice to go get it right back with her in like ten seconds. Hmm. Um. But before we, so I do want to. We do have. I do want to mention um the another character in the show um who person were, who like I think was Mrs. Beakley's boss um Ludwig von S- Duck. The guy we saw at the no beach. von von, von Drake. Drake. Ludwig von, von Drake. Yeah, he is an historic important character in the history of Disney. So. It'd be cool. It's cool. Yeah, he he his name I actually recognized. <laughs> I did not recognize it because like he's in a lot of the old musical yeah. films from Disney from like the fifties and stuff. Yeah. right? Wow. I think he's. I think yeah. in one. I think he's like another re- canon. He's Donald's therapist. <laughs> what? <laughs> wow. I mean, he he does have the therapist voice of like very German. Yeah. Okay, so like yeah. that's kind of a stereotype, <laughs> right? Like. <laughs> But uh, but yeah, like he, his only appearance here is just getting one upped by uh, Agent Twenty Two, just being beat to the punch, explaining the plot to us. Yeah, it was not the most <laughs> like just reading... depiction of him first time around. I was not very high in him. I wonder we'll see him again in the present. He was kind of old. Hey, the... I mean, maybe he's still alive. <laughs> Oh, he... I feel like no one dies of old age in yes. this show. Yeah, they just <laughs> no, like, they, they like every... the cane and they look exactly the same. Maybe they have glasses. That's the only difference. <laughs> so yeah, Agent 22, I think, ha- had a, a lot of in- interesting stuff going for it throughout. Um, the the Gizmo Duck episode is also interesting in other ways. Um, <laughs> wow. Michelle, you, you... <laughs> it's also interesting in other ways. I could not have said well, that myself. <laughs> Well, uh, actually, to to be fair, I think I'm higher on this episode than you guys, but I'll, I'll let you guys explain first. Like M- Michelle, like what parts of Gizmo Duck worked for you and which parts didn't? Um, I really I enjoyed some of the action sequences. Um, I like Mark Beeks. I think it makes sense that he got kind ah. of villainous because mm-hmm. he I don't know he's just kind of a ridiculous like meme villain which is fascinating because it feels so current but i feel like it's it's working it's holding my attention i'm buying into it the thing that's really kind of i think i'm the lowest on is the fact that so fenton is voiced by lin-manuel miranda we know this this last time it's like very distracting to hear lin-manuel miranda just talk as himself all the time it's kind of breaking my immersion. Also, Fenton's supposed to be like a young... He's either in his late teens or early 20s, right? And Lin-Manuel Miranda does not have like a, a young man voice. He has an adult man voice. And this also made it kind of hard to buy into this. He is this young, scrappy person with an unpaid internship who just wants to make his way in the world. If that makes sense. This is my major hot... Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> uh, 
Okay, that, that, that's not actually what I was expecting. Yeah. Yeah, but, uh, yeah, the, yeah. That, 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 that's a reason. Uh, obviously, like Fenton is a big part of this uh, of this episode. So if you can't really get into him as a character, then the, that's well, kind of a block right that, there. It, I liked his mom a lot, but I was yeah. not very high on him himself. Oh, that's cool. Um, right. Uh, yeah. Steve? Um, yeah. Interesting. Mark Peaks when it gets more ducks around, he's a whole totally different character. If he's just dealing with Scrooge and the nephews, he just you know, kind of harmless, but with Gizmo Duck, he he really becomes villainous, very dangerous. I think I think yeah. next, I think uh, pretty much right now in this episode, he's probably he's just below Magicka and um, Black Hair. What's that? Black Heron? Yeah. Yeah, she's Black just Heron. Be- yeah, Black Heron. Yeah, she's yeah. Just below them in terms of being a legitimately threatening villain. Um, he's way ahead of. Above Glongo for sure. Everybody's got to be at Glongo. <laughs> uh, and, and one thing you have to mention, I did love the the Sailor Moon transformation. That was good. Yeah. And and listen, if we have Scrooge and Glongo, but I think now we got a new sort of crack ship. We got Fenton and <laughs> Beaks. Sort of crack- oh, no, Gizmo totally. Duck Beaks. <laughs> yeah, Gizmo Duck and Beaks for sure is the new he crack totally ship. Totally had the man crush on Gizmo flying Duck. Flying through the air, and he was tearing up with joy. <laughs> And that happens. Hot take, it was though, hot take though, I like the hot take for now is I think legitimately Mark Beaks is might actually really be gay. I really think if there's one character in this show that's going to be canon, you know, either bi or gay, it would be Mark Beaks. Um, <laughs> all right. I, I, I... I mean, the, the the ship is that was a very strong oh, yeah. moment. I'll, I'll give you that. <laughs> um, I'm surprised you guys are that high on Mark Beaks. Like he's he's the part of the episode that kind of doesn't work for me. Like he is very very memey. Um, like uh, in the past, like I think we had considered him like a semi villain, but not really. And like here, he just goes all in. So like that felt like a bit of a shift for me. One that I think the show's prepared us for, but still, like it, it kind of threw me, threw me off. Um, the whole thing of like him being riding a helicopter and him happening to be in the path of the rocket was very convenient. I gotta say, uh, not not sure if that was on purpose or not, but uh, I mean, Mark Beats is smart enough. But and yeah, like uh, there's like a piece of dialogue. There's like you're a bad meme right now. I want to make you a good <laughs> meme. <laughs> like like is, it feels. So. <laughs> Yeah, that that is and like it, I get it's 2018, but like I still feel weird hearing meme in TV in TV mm-hmm. shows. But uh, um, yeah, so Mark Beaks is eh, to me, but and also the whole like take um, like using Gizmo Duck as like an app sort of thing, like it's just kind of sad. Like it, it it is the way it is an evil thing to do <laughs> in a weird way. So, but uh, yeah, like that that felt weird. I kind of the thing I actually like, I did like that well, though, in that because Gizmo Duck's giving these reasons for why that's problematic, right? He's like, well, what about the people who don't have access to apps? And I feel like, I mean, it, it's a very surface level, but I did like that the show was trying to put, like, well, you know, like, there. What, what about, like, economic inequality? You're going to be helping a certain kind of person, but not everyone. And that's, like, inherently problematic and not okay. Mm-hmm. I liked, I liked mm-hmm. that. But, like, yeah, it is very surface level. I won't give them too many props for it. But I, I did kind of like that that was a discussion that was had. Oh, I do. Well, and th- that goes into what I like. I like Fenton as a character because I, I think that, like, he's very earnest yeah. in-, in his desires to do yeah. things. And, like, that-, that sequence, for example, like, him being unable to help the family that's getting robbed and, like, him banging his uh, his fist on the road. Like, uh, I-, I like Fenton yeah. in general as a character. And so yeah. I-, I really enjoy seeing his and I- struggles in here. And I really enjoyed the relationship he has with his yeah. mom. Uh, th- this is the introduction of um, mama yeah. um, as she's called here uh in the past we've talked a little bit about uh, um the character being portrayed as hispanic i, I know in the, in the last episode i wasn't as high on that just because it hadn't really done done the work mm-hmm. but, like this episode goes all in with her oh. with his mom because like she's speaking half english half spanish she's watching a telenovela oh, okay. but like also she is a full full character too like she's out there doing her work as a police officer oh. she's protecting huey as the billboard yeah comes down mm-hmm. so like they uh, her uh, his mom i think is the mvp of this episode and i really enjoy the representation they did uh in terms of the, the hispanic heritage this time around as opposed to fenton's one thing i'm not sure of, I think that's though, a really good point one thing i'm not sure of does she know 
Fenton is Gizmo Duck at the end. Um, I mean, how did does she know like how she got injured and stuff? Um, I, I hope- don't remember if she <laughs> knows or not. I mean, I hopefully they she find yeah. out. Hopefully the show does the stuff with that more like Mr. Cons and less like Miraculous Ladybug. Yeah, although at the same time, Gizmo Duck isn't as important of a character. <laughs> so, like, does it matter if people know who he is? Yeah, talking about his like, loved one, his mom. Know. I'm not talking about the the whole world. I'm just talking about you know. Yeah, yeah, uh, but yeah, I guess they they leave that vague yeah. at the end. Um, but, but I would hope the, though the, the she's actual... smart enough though she's up close to Gizmo Duck to be able to tell her son in a suit like by his voice, his mannerisms. I mean, that's more that's realistic. The thing we hope with all superheroes, and somehow nobody ever <laughs> catches on. So I wouldn't count on that, honestly. And like th- this is a little bit more believable because as Gizmo Duck, he seems to just like gain confidence in his talking. Yeah. While when he's out of the suit, he's very hesitant about however he talks. So like at least there, it's kind of understandable. He's not really talking like himself, so I, I kind of get it, or at least I can buy I can buy the the, the difference. The, the the ending of this episode is just uh, him in a cast at the hospital, and then Scrooge shows up. It's like, no, now now you work for me. It's like in the end, uh, it's all it's all back uh, to normal for the most part. Uh, Improved suit, thankfully, that will not be as glitchy. Speak and um, one thing, uh, Huey. Uh, he does Fenton is very earnest, and that's pretty much what Huey is too. He's very earnest too. So maybe kind he, of being Huey's his red shirt, right? Yes, yes. Yeah, yes, no, I yes. loved him this episode. He's trying so hard, and he was right all along, and everyone kept brushing him off because he's like a kid. But he was right, and he, he effortlessly fixed the machine at the end, which I was like, wow, I didn't know you were so techie, but good for you. Well, he's the one with the Junior Woodchuck guidebook, so. That's true. He's like, this is worth two batches. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man, this is amazing. <laughs> Uh, also, he keeps pushing out that reporter, uh, Roxanne, at the yeah. beginning. It's like, uh, hey, so th- this robot monster, yeah. <laughs> what about him? Like, no, he's a hero. Yeah. <laughs> so that was very nice of Huey to defend. And, <laughs> you know, that, and uh, very var- environmentally conscious. Okay, you did not take, like, a recycle mo- his note. Yeah, recycle, yeah. Yeah. recycle it, you oh, monster. Right, right. <laughs> that, that was a good joke. <laughs> So, so yeah, I, I, I think uh, Gizmo Duck, like, it, it has moments, and I, I think each of us got got something out of it, at least. <laughs> like, the, the, there are parts that... Well, are, I got, of course, was Donald being in the episode, so... Poor Donald. <laughs> yeah, that, that was, was good enough for you. <laughs> He's my childhood hero, so excuse me. <laughs> Yeah, look, look at your hero. He is he is begging at a bank. It's for not money. Donald's fault. He has anger management problems. He's just trying to raise his nephews the best he can. He's someone to look up to. Yeah, um, yeah. He, he's doing the best he can to raise those boys. He's very um. He, he definitely thinks highly of them. He's like their father figure to them. Yeah. Like, I love the way he shows baby pictures of them, and and also um he he can kick butt when he gets pissed off. So yeah, I I feel like <laughs> Donald is a very relatable in how incredibly flawed he is. Yeah. And, and <laughs> so, and I, I'm team Donald also. Thank you. And, and that's why a lot of people have been saying why Donald is, for most people, more popular than Mickey, than Mickey mm-hmm. Mouse, because Mickey yeah. Mouse is pretty much a Gary Sue, and Donald is so flawed that we can see ourselves in him. Ooh, is the Gary Sue the male equivalent of Mary Sue? Yes, yes. yes. <laughs> and I, I don't know about this. Okay, that's cool. Um, <laughs> I, I don't Gary think it's Sue. common knowledge, but it, it is a very good term. I like it. But, um, <laughs> Um, it, now, it, the other episode from three weeks ago, that it was a, it's, it's been a while since then, the day of the only child. This one's kind of like three mini yeah, episodes in one because, yeah, it breaks up at the beginning because the, the conceit is, uh, hey, look, we, the, this is the day where we all get to pretend to be only children, so let's go off and do our own things. Yeah. Even though you, you could do that exactly. any other you day of the, of the year. You decide to do that any you know? day, guys. You don't need a holiday. Well, yeah, I yeah. Do, do wonder, though, yeah. and how if how Donald would feel if he knew about this, because for him, for a long time, every day is only child day for him. Uh, I did not, I don't know, maybe he has feelings about it, he might not, though. I know, I'm just saying, I, he might say they're kind of ingrates, like they appreciate what they have, because he well, had the same thing and he says, lost right? it. Yeah, because Webby's well, like, the, I'm a the, child and I wish I had siblings. I know, I'm sorry, but well, Donald's different, though. He had a sister and she, and she, like, presumably died and stuff. So it's a little bit different than Webby, who never had a sibling. So it's... 
Uh huh. And the fun part is that at the end, like the the nephews are explaining, like this wasn't meant to be permanent. Like this was one day. Like uh, at the end, we were always going to get back together no matter what. So like, uh, I, I appreciate that. Yeah, <laughs> like, the show is pro sibling, which is good. Oh, oh and yeah, it's always good do, to have sibling and, relationships that are functional. And from, um, <laughs> yes. And, right away from the uh, Gizmo Duck episode, we do have some continuity between the. Um, Dialogue between um, Huey and like the leader of the Beagle Boys, like like he remembers his name. That was my favorite yes. of the of the like the events that happened. The Beagle Boys realizing what like positive relationships are and just <laughs> being so devoted to him. It's so good. I love it. Yeah, I, I like that the the scene where they're cooking and um, he, he's making like junkyard oh, yeah. stew and like the you, you you'd expect to, um, Huey to do the classic like, uh, oh it's good like th- that's usually what happens in that situation but the, the, they like treat it as actual food like is that cumin yeah it complements the root vegetables like it, it was a nice little uh, subversion of what usually oh, happens in that situation yeah, yeah, yeah. so I like that little scene and it in seems particular. though the junior woodchucks are um how do you say uh. They're co have boys and girls in it. They're, They're co ed. Yeah, co ed. Oh. It was it was Are they? I, 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 I saw a girl like one of the three teams. There was a girl in it for sure, and that was not yes, always the case. Yeah, so, isn't the competition a three man competition though? There's a girl. There's a girl who <laughs> check right there. I know. I know it. Um, okay, you, you know what you saw. All right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, Launchpad is the chapter leader of these junior woodchucks, which I yeah. am very worried no, about. Like, great. I'm not sure. It's great. <laughs> well, well, I. Uh, are we sure he can handle supervising children? It could be worse, though. It could be Donald to be the. Yeah, he would be master. so mad all the time. Everyone would be afraid. Well, he yeah. was the scoutmaster in the uh, in the comics in the Car Barks comics, so I think they got a little improvement here. I think Launch. Yeah, it also makes me wonder why Huey is a part of this organization. Like, he could probably learn all this on his own if Launchpad is his leader. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but yeah, so like that, that, that whole sequence goes on where the Beagle Boys are being taught to be nice and then they kidnap their actual leader and <laughs> hijinks ensue. And then we cut over to Louie, the green shirt. Yeah. And, <laughs> and, and, and uh, his little story is to go meet the richest kid in Duckburg, uh, Doofus. Uh, um, I, I, I believe I we've already expressed our opinions Memphis of him as Drake. very He's more weird. a creepy version of Richie Rich. Gives him a creepy bracelet. Yeah. That's how you know it's trouble. Yeah. He calls him a friend yeah, present friend multiple present. times. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so I, scared. Um, I wonder he he could be a future main villain, perhaps. I think he's just as de- no. Uh, he's definitely psychotic. You know. Well, yeah, <laughs> but like he's not really villainous as much as just like a weirdo. Like if you go into his house, you're in trouble. But he's not gonna like go outside his house and bother people just for the heck of it. So he's more of like an evil version of Webby. Um, I guess uh, in that they're both her- hermits. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, uh, Louis mentions at some point, like, "Hey, my butler's a ghost." And then the the uh, is it? Are they dad and mom of Doofus? Yes, yes, yeah, that's parents. Yes. Those are his parents. But, yeah, like the, the mom says, "We're dead inside." And, <laughs> like, broke their spirit years and ago. I'm glad that Duckworth at least got a mention. So, yeah, that, that that's a little bit of continuity, right? Like, my my butler's a ghost, even though we haven't seen him since that episode where he became a ghost. I still want to hopefully answer uh, our question: Is can people outside? the manor see him could like outside the family see him so well we we haven't yeah, seen I know. him yet so so far the answer is no <laughs> <laughs> um and then uh, dewey stays home uh, hosting a solo late night I show i love that um, it's so weird but it's also endearing he's embarrassed about yeah like i this. i think this this is my i think this is my favorite section of the episode like, just because of how goofy yeah. it is and also like it's it's just him alone, like he's doing the monologue, he's doing the house band. He's doing everything. <laughs> he's, uh, I don't know. I, I, I found it kind of disturbing, but like it was endearing enough. Why did it disturb you? I, I don't know. Just, it's just what he was doing, why he keeps me so secretive. And I, I, don't, I don't know what he's trying to do there. I don't know what why he wants to do the talk show in private. Um, He's just embarrassed. Like, for whatever reason, he's very self conscious about it. Webby thinks it's great, but I mean. He he hasn't shared it with anyone, so he doesn't know how they'll feel. Probably. Mm-hmm. 
And and Disney Channel released a couple of shorts based on this. So. Oh really? Are they good? All yeah, right, they're funny. And the, 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 the joke <laughs> is every episode ends with Glamgo getting uh, bumped off the show. Oh, Glamgo goes on the show. No, no, the real Glamgo. Well, he gets bumped off. I, I did watch one where he's uh, where uh, Dewey is uh, interviewing the 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 horse who has the head of Scrooge. Oh, right, <laughs> that weird character. Like, Manny. Yeah, and then at the end, it's just like, sorry, Glomgold got pushed off the show this week. Oh, I see. <laughs> it's just like a running gag. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, I, I would watch episodes of this yeah, show, like, if you had actual guests. Yeah, real guests and not fake <laughs> pretend guests. Yeah. He, he could still play the, the monologue and the house band. I think that works. Like, he, he can keep switching between those two, but... <laughs> Um, and Webby is inside some random security robot well, <laughs> spying uh, on Dewey. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> but in the, in the process, the robot goes haywire. It takes him to Doofus's house, and then also all the other storylines converge yeah. on Doofus's house. And they have a small fight sequence, and they break I'm out. Just, yeah. Oh, and, I, and I wonder. Hopefully, man, uh, Doofus does not do anything horrible to the Beagle Boys after they left, because I'm worried for them. More well, they're in his them. house, so... Yeah. Doofus is a dangerous know. person. He is dangerous. More he scary is dangerous. than the I love Doofus. I love his name's <laughs> Doofus. I love it. He's so scary. He just leaves an impression. Uh, he, uh, actually, I'm just remembering, he has a hat where, like, he's st- sucking ice cream. Like, oh, yeah. Is that doable? I If I it's... Know. So, it's, if it's, like, soup consistency, I think so. If it's, like, a really but, runny like, does it even day, taste any good at, at soup oh, consistency? Oh, yeah! Like, There's I, whole debates about, like, you know, soupy ice cream versus hard, frozen, sad ice cream. And, personally, yeah. I would rather go with the soup. How are you? That's my second wow. hot take. <laughs> People, wow! Yeah, that, that's the hottest take of this episode. Like, I, I, is, it, is it possible to purposely get a brain freeze? Yeah. Oh, it's definitely possible to, to purposely yeah. get it. If if you consume too much at one time, then like it, you're almost bound to happen. Like, I guess people have different thresholds, but I think everyone has a threshold where they get a brain freeze if you get to a certain amount of ice cream consumed. Mm-hmm. Doofus was doing that as a power move at the very beginning, just to. <laughs> at the moment i approve see this guy he's he's thought about things is doofus your new favorite character Absolutely michelle not. he's he's a mess but i just think he's interesting <laughs> really <Still back laughs> all right interesting if you don't know actually the original doofus from the 1987 series the people the producers of this show hated him so so this is he also a rich kid and evil? No, 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 he wasn't. Just a token fat kid. Oh, that's awful. Uh, but that's one of the that's one of the things about like eighties cartoons yeah. sometimes. They'll just like, the way, make fun of people. In one episode fat. though in one episode though, you find out he's bullied by someone named Bully Beagle. I'm kinda of wondering in this show maybe they kind of reference that, maybe that Maybe the next time you see the Beagle Boys, you can mention that Bully Beagle's been missing for who knows how long and could imply that Doofus did something to him. I kind of... Like, yeah, yeah, Do- Doofus killed somebody. Doofus has done enough damage. I don't think even if he was Bully that I'm going to cut him a lot of slack. He he enslaved his parents, basically. That's already crossed the line. And I and know, and her gram- his grandma, I mean... Which a bad idea giving him all this money and well, that's why just, give- he loves his grandma. He like worships her portrait. Yeah. Well, because he get he she gave her him yeah. the money. Money so, equals like, that, love. That, 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 Which also interesting yeah. though. Also, bring another point. Louis calling himself like the heir to Scrooge McDuck is like he's skipping Donald. Doesn't it go Donald oh first and God. then? That's true. He is skipping Donald. Oh, maybe he just never saw Donald as a real threat. <laughs> also, we we don't really know Scrooge and Donald's history, so like, could Donald have been written out yeah, of the will? Like, I don't rule, I don't rule it out. But he doesn't or, really you know. like Gander but, either, so <laughs> yeah. But so, well, um, well, I guess we can wrap up with this. Of of these three episodes, who is your MVP? Is, is Doofus in the discussion? Yeah, I don't think <laughs> I'm not. I mean, like, he's not a nice person, so I'm not yeah. gonna <laughs> I'm not gonna say he's the MVP. Mm. Then who would be? Um, young Mrs. Beakley, I think. Yeah. Or Webby. Okay. One of those okay. two. Hmm. 
I don't know, I, that's the only answer I want to give, but I guess I'll give something different. Like like we're in a panel. Um, I gotta go. I guess with um, Young Scrooge. He's just he was awesome, and I love seeing him. Like how cool he was back in the day, and how and how he never ages. How he never ages? He looks the same. Like Mrs. Beakley at least looks different. Like she looks younger. He looks exactly the same. And I do like how he well, finally. We already dealt with this in a previous episode. He consumes some liquid that made him immortal with Goldie or guilt or whatever. Yeah, I like, can't <laughs> wait though for the next episode we have Webby in. I kind of wonder if they're going to follow up on the whole Uncle Scrooge thing. So, oh yeah, yeah, I I I did appreciate the that this episode finally gave them an episode together. It had been a while, I think. But um, and uh, I think my MVP is Fenton because I, I think he, he's the one who like makes the Gizmo Duck episode watchable more more so than Mark Beaks to me. Although I think there's an argument for Mark Beaks' MVP if you prefer his villainy in that episode as well. Mm-hmm. But like the, the that that's an episode that like needs a, a character to stand out to make yeah. it interesting enough for those of us who aren't as invested in the nostalgia factor mm-hmm. of it. And I I think Fenton does a good job here to be, being a full character. I think you've made a really good argument for Fenton, Alex. Yeah. And I'll say for me, like, if somebody else had voiced him, if somebody who wasn't clearly, like, a 40-year-old man, it, it would have yeah, that, that, it it's, it's been a fair more criticism. viable. If and it would have been anyone who sounded younger. That bothers you, yet the nephews being voiced by grown-ups, that... That's what I mean, though, because they actually, like, their, their voice register... Is higher, so they 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 just I feel like it works for them in a way it just doesn't for for Miranda. Oh well, that just I guess you're that type of cat, Michelle. <laughs> this <laughs> <laughs> that's why it's my hot take, but I can't I can't help how I feel. It's very distracting. I, I know how you feel, Michelle. I feel the exact same way. I can't help how I feel about certain things, like how I felt like the ending of. Day of the Only Child, I really thought it would be great if we got April, May, and June cameo at the very end. <laughs> okay, stop, stop. No more Daisy, no more April, May, and June. Keep them over in Caballero's land, okay? Just keep them over well, there. Well, they're not exclusive to that land, though. If, 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 wonder... if, if they, if they want to come, let them come on their own. Don't, don't keep summoning them. Yeah, this, it does feel uh, like summoning at this point. It's summoning to you from the grave. Just, just come on the just own stop, and you. Look, look, Steve, if Magicka came to you and said, sell your soul to me he and I'll put Daisy it. in the show, he you would do it. So bad. Well, made that very clear. And once again, she's way better than Minnie. <laughs> okay, okay. 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 Well, well, anyways. We gotta wrap this up before we go yes. crazy. <laughs> I'm gonna let die of laughter. Yeah, I, I think this is a place to cut yeah. it off. We're, we're done here. We're done here. But, uh, yeah, we'll be coming back with uh, DuckTales. It, it, hopefully this time we'll go back to our every two weeks schedule. Oh, um, the, uh, this week uh, we are expecting to have a panel come out for DuckTales at San Diego Comic Con. It's possible there might be news. If there is, we'll cover that whenever we have our, our next podcast. But uh, until then, you can find out all the info on this podcast at OverlyAnimated.com. You can join us on Discord to chat with us about DuckTales or any other show we cover here at OverlyAnimated.com slash Discord. Uh, so you can support us via Patreon at Patreon.com slash OverlyAnimated. Thanks to all of our current patrons, especially our patron of the podcast, Michael, a.k.a. Mickey. Oh, um, Michael. That's a very prescient pre- <laughs> um, patron. I all the time <laughs> yeah, but, uh, so I probably called him Mickey. I, I, had I haven't no known that. That's, that was a thing. Yeah, that, that, yeah, but that, uh, mm-hmm. anyways. <laughs> and the thanks as always to our Patreon executive producers, John, Ryan, Steve, Andy, and Hugh. Um, besides DuckTales, we also have covered Steven Woo! Universe recently. We've covered o- OKKO. Mm-hmm. Um, upcoming, we'll, we'll probably have other shows to talk about soon although i think we're kind of we're kind of finally in a bit of a quiet period in terms of shows we cover but we'll always have well, stuff in to canada talk about. maybe if canada's nice to us uh yeah m- m- <laughs> mr khan's over on nickelodeon uh the, the, so we'll, we'll see and, and obviously with, with comic-con we might get more dates on stuff including maybe some ducktails information as well. i wish i could go uh, you, you wish you could go to go beg for daisy is that it I love cons. I can't go there because I live in the other side of the country. Same. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, that's a mood. <laughs> that's a mood. Uh, 
Yeah. But, uh, th thanks for listening, guys, and we'll, we'll talk to you soon. All right. Donald Duck for president. No.